Hi everyone, welcome to part 1 of the tutorial for Dixie Maguire by Tommy Emanuel. As always, first the top tier patrons and today we have a reason to celebrate as I can welcome Jill, the first female top tier patron. If you want to support the channel while gaining access to some nice extras like the new Sound Slice library, then please head over to the Patreon page. For support without monthly payments, there is also a PayPal tip jar. Both links are down below in the description. Dixie Maguire is a very, very early Tommy Emanuel song, written in the 70s as the musical depiction of the young and playful daughter of a dear friend. This song is considered an easy Tommy Emanuel song and it is one of the very first thumb picking songs I ever learned. Digging through this song sure brought back some memories. Now, before recording this tutorial, however, I made sure to check out the most recent versions, making sure that all the parts and variations that were added later are included as well. Since this song will be on the list of many beginning finger pickers, I decided to make this tutorial move nice and slow, covering each section in great detail and showing you a few little tricks that can make certain parts a lot easier. Since this video is long enough already, I'm going to stop talking and move on to the lesson. Have fun. Okay, so time for Dixie Maguire then. All you need is a guitar in standard tuning and a thumb pick. It probably is possible to play this song without a thumb pick, but again, as always, you will lose some of those funky backbeats in the process. I'm using a thumb pick all the way through, just to see what works for you. Let's go over the intro one time in full and then all the explanation will come right after that. Here we go. And that is already the first note of the verse. Now, uh, I've played two different versions of the intro side by side. So the first four bars are what you would call the easiest version of the intro. And then in the second part, I'm adding a fill that Tommy uses a lot more in his most recent recordings. So in that way, you got both of them out of the way in the same go, and you can use whatever you like most throughout the rest of the song. First, the easiest version of the intro. So that first voicing is something that will pop up all the time. You're starting out with a pinky on the fifth fret A string, ring finger fourth fret on the D string, and then the index finger on the second fret of the G string, completely upright, making sure that the open B string can pass underneath that. That's your first chord. So the D note on the A string, fifth fret with the pinky, together with the second fret on the G string and the open B string. And then for the next chord, you, you're flattening that index finger to a little bar across three strings. So you're moving from this position to that position while keeping the rest of the chord in place. And the next beat is the thumb pick on the F sharp, fourth fret on the D string, together with the index finger and middle finger, both second fret on the G string and B string, just plucking together with the, the thumb pick. And then moving the pinky to the low E string and plucking together with the high E string, again, while holding down the bar on the second fret. Moving to the low A string can possibly put a bit of a strain on the pinky for some people. It is possible just to leave out that fifth fret on the low E string just play the open A string. Uh, I have no idea why Tommy chose to play that alternating fingering between the A string and the E string, but if you are struggling with the use of the pinky, then that open A string might help you. So just removing the pinky for that low A bass note instead of moving to the fifth fret. You will see me using that alternating fingering all the way through the tutorial because this is how Tommy does it. And otherwise I will get a lot of uh, comments down below saying I'm not doing it right. But it is possible to leave out the pinky and play the open A string instead. For the very last beat you're removing that little bar again and you're playing 
the second fret on the G string together with that open B string again while playing the thumb pick on the F sharp. And then adding in the bass note on the uh, A string again for the next bar. So this is what it sounds like with, or what, what it looks like with the alternating fingering with the pinky. And the second bar is almost the same, but just uh, a bit more on that in a second. One time without the alternating fingering. So and that is the same thing, just removing the pinky and putting it back. That is for people struggling with the pinky, just to use the open A string. It sounds exactly the same, uh, but it's a bit, little bit different than what Tommy's doing. The second bar, as you might have seen already, is almost the exact same thing. We're just leaving out the last chord. So the first bar, one more time. And for the rest, it's just putting down the bar again and just filling out the uh, bass part for the rest of the bar. Again, here you can also choose to use the pinky alternating or with the open A string. Those full two bars. There's only one thing that really can go wrong when you move from the first bar to the second bar. That is that chord that you play on the fourth beat of the first bar, this one, has to ring out while you play that bass note on the A string. So make sure that you don't accidentally mute that open B string that really has to carry over across the bar line. And one more time without the alternating fingering and then that will be the last time I cover that. And then I almost forgot there is this one little fill at the end of the bar, just index finger right before you go for the bass note on the D string. That's all that happens, just index finger, bass note, and you're done for the bar. And then the next two bars are centered around a G chord or at least a G triad. Fifth fret, ring finger on the D string. Fourth fret, middle finger on the G string. Third fret, index finger on the B string. But you will be moving down that index finger to the second fret for a few uh, variations on the chord. You will also need the pinky on the fifth fret on the high E string. You're starting out with that index finger stretched down one fret to the second fret and you will be resolving that tension straight away to the third fret. So low E bass note and then just moving up the index finger and playing the chord while you're moving the thumb pick to the D string. The pinky is already there. back with the index finger to the second fret and in this bar you keep alternating between the low E string and the D string for the bass notes. So, And then as soon as you play that last chord, again this one has to carry over across the bar line, make sure that everything sounds out as you move to an A bass note. Everything else is again moving up the index finger to the third fret and playing that exact same fill, just index finger on the G string, fourth fret, right before the last bass note on the D string. And you're basically playing the exact same thing as you did in the second bar. So in the first, or let me say in the third bar, you're alternating the bass line between the low E string and the D string. As soon as you enter the fourth bar, it becomes again a three uh, string bass pattern, A string, D string, E string, D string. And now there is one little fill that I would like to add. Tommy's sometimes 
when he plays that first chord in front of the first beat, he doesn't actually pluck or pick the next chord. He just slides up the index finger. So we get one, two, three, four, one, two, and just sliding up that index finger to the third fret without picking anything in the, the picking hand. One, two, three. And most of the time he does pick that chord in the second bar. Just a, a little variation. Let me play the first four bars all the way through. And now in the second uh, time around, the second time around, sometimes Tommy just plays this two times in a row, head straight into the verse. Now there is one variation that I see pop up more and more in the more uh, recent verses that Tommy plays, and that's this one. The, the basic thing happens in the first chord, nothing much changes there. And that part is the exact same thing as you just played, and now he is adding in a slide that heads into the next chord, which is a bit tricky on the finger. See, so it happens right on the spot where you have to transfer from the first chord to the second chord. And what is happening is Tommy is starting from this fingering, down the ring finger, adding in the middle finger on the third fret on the G string. While you play that third fret on the G string, you're going to slide up. You do slide up that ring finger alongside from the fourth fret to the fifth fret. And you are going to play that fifth fret as the last bass note of the bar. So this basically means that you are playing one of the chord tones of the next chord in this bar already. Doesn't seem to bother the ears too much, uh, but it does make for a logical change in fingering. So as you slide up to the fourth fret, try to get that uh, bass note on the fifth fret in as you arrive on the fourth fret. So that's what should happen. And then again, this is a bit of a stretch, adding in the second fret on the B string, and we're going to slide that up to the third fret as well. Playing that second fret in front of the beat and then adding in the low E string and make sure that those notes keep ringing out across the bar line again. Because once you play that low E note, you're going to slide up to the third fret. And again, as you slide up to the third fret, that's when you play the bass note on the fifth fret on the D string again. So two times the exact same trick, sliding up from the third fret to the fourth fret and playing the bass note on the fifth fret, D string, and then doing the exact same thing on the third fret, from starting from the second fret, sorry. again exactly the same thing. Uh, apart from the very last two beats, if you are heading into the verse at that point, you just play a bass line, open A string, fourth fret with the ring finger on the A string, and then rounding it out in the next bar with the pinky on the fifth fret. Let me play those last four bars. straight into the verse. Now, uh, just one thing I, I want to mention before uh, I play through this one last time. I did apply a fair amount of palm muting in this section, just so you can really clearly hear all uh, the different parts, so you can clearly hear what the bass part is, what the chords are, what the melody should do. If you hear Tommy play this live, he actually puts a lot less muting on the picking hand in this part than I did now. So he plays it almost open. And then 
he's then then he really tightens up the muting once he enters into the verse. So again, see what works for you. Light muting, maybe a bit heavier muting. Maybe once you are comfortable with it, playing it all uh, almost open. Uh, that sounds really nice as well as a contrast heading into the verse, but always make sure that the bass notes do not overpower the rest of the melody. One time, all the way through the intro, really slowly, and then we'll have a look at the verse. Here we go. the verse. Let me play through the verse one time all the way and then again all the explanation will follow right after that. Here we go. already the re-intro which sort of follows up each and every verse. So there's a lot going on, let's have a quick look at what is happening. The first fingering is one you will have to use all the time throughout the song. We're starting out with the pinky on the fifth fret on the A string, ring finger fourth fret on the D string and then basically a little bar across the third, uh, second fret, sorry, second fret with the index finger, adding in the middle finger on the third fret on the B string. In this case, you're not really playing that A note on the G string, but if you uh, are a bit uh, heavier on the thumb pick, then you might play that string uh, alongside the bass note, which will sound really good. Tommy actually does this, playing two notes at the same time with the thumb pick. So make sure you put down the index finger for that first chord all the way to the G string. And basically, if you have that chord down, then that is the only thing you have to play in the first two beats, bass note and E string, B string, together with the thumb pick on the D string. And then, as you play through the first melody of this song, you will hopefully notice one thing, the middle finger on the third fret on the B string never leaves its place. It just stays there the whole time. Let me play through it just a little bit slower so you can get a good look. Look at this finger, the middle finger, it never moves. And that is the first time any sort of movement uh, happens in that middle finger is in the very last bar. So you have three full bars where the middle finger stays on the third fret and only in the fourth bar you're removing that to get an open string instead. So always keep that in mind, the middle finger isn't going anywhere, it's staying down the whole time. So we already talked about that opening chord and then moving from the pinky to the ring finger on the fourth fret. So basically coming from this chord, the ring finger just jumps over to the A string and you remove the bar at the second fret to get an open E string. And then that bass line sounds a bit strange. If you play it slow, it will sound fine once you speed it up because you're playing first a C sharp and then back to a D note, which is only a half step difference. It's not really difficult to play, but if you play it slow, you might think, well, there's something wrong here. No, it's perfectly fine. Once you speed it up, it, it will sound just the, the way you are uh, accustomed to hearing. Nothing wrong with that. So really slowly. And what is happening in that second bar is just a second uh, half of the bar is thumb pick to, on the A string together with the open E string, third fret on the B string, thumb pick to the D string, again with an open E, and then putting down a full bar across five strings. 
to head into a B minor chord. You're plucking or picking the B string and the E string straight right in front of the first beat. And then laying down the bass note on the first beat. So one, two, three, four, one. Melody in front of the first beat, bass note dead on the first beat. Next two beats are actually really simple, just the bass note and the alternating bass line on the B string. Now, I'm just going to add this. In more recent versions, Tommy sort of funks this up a little bit more, and whenever he gets the chance, he does play two strings with the same pick stroke of the thumb pick. This really helps to create a, a, a bit of a heavier or swinging backbeat, uh, which really helps the movement of the song. So whenever you, you get the chance, like on this B chord, really go out of your way and make sure that with the thumb pick you play both the D string and the B string at the same time. This really helps to sort of get that snare-like backbeat in there and it really pushes the song forward. And it's not that hard to do if you don't have to play any melody notes on top at the same time. And really just snapping that backbeat, maybe lifting or uh, lifting the pressure of the chord really quickly so you get a really short backbeat. There's this one variation that Tommy does in the, in the version I transcribed, he only does this the first time, which is playing that open E note in front of the third beat. One, two, three, four. So basically doing the same thing as on the B minor chord. First playing the open E string and then playing the A bass note, but he only did this the very first time, so it's a variation that doesn't pop up too often. In the next few bars, we'll see that most of the time he just plays that open E note and that A note at the exact same time. The picking pattern of that melody is something we already saw in the first bar, just melody note, bass note, to the B string, and then again open E string and the open D string at the same time, middle finger and thumb pick, and going back to the first, uh, sorry, to the second fret on the high E string with the index finger. Again, middle finger hasn't moved uh, uh, the slightest bit yet, it's still there from all the way at the beginning of the verse. Then putting down the index finger again on the 2nd fret, adding in the ring finger on the 4th fret on the low E string and the pinky 4th fret on the G string, giving you an E dominant 7th chord. And there's not really much happening apart from this, so the melody again, like in the B minor chord, is in front of the beat, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. And we're basically just completing the bass pattern underneath. One, two, three, four. Alternating only between the E string and the D string. And again, like we did in the intro, adding just a little fill, one chord tone adding in there just to push the rhythm a little bit more forward. Three, four. And again, as you can see, I'm, I'm on that second backbeat, I'm again trying to play two notes at the same time. There is no melody on top, so I really get the chance to put in that heavier backbeat. Three, four. And then just plucking with the index finger on the G string, adding in another bass note. And then we're going for a little uh, ascending chord section, removing everything except for the ring finger. The ring finger slides down to the third fret. Two open strings, and a quite simple move going up, so you have two open strings in front of the first beat, so three, four, G, second beat, A dominant, but you're not, you can put down the index finger for safety, but you're not playing it, then two, 
second fret on the low E string, third fret on the G string, which is a G chord with a B in the bass. And we're moving that up two frets. We're keeping the open G string in there to C sharp, G natural and E. And this gives you an A dominant chord with a C sharp in the bass. Heading back to your first chord, the D chord. That little section, just that ascending chord section, is one of the easier parts in the song up to this point. Three, four. And maybe the only thing to watch out for. Moving up first, index finger, middle finger with the upper part of the chord and then adding in the bass note on the fourth beat. Three, four, one, two, three, four. So the bass note lands exactly on the fourth beat. Three, four, one, two, three, four. The good news is this is repeated quite a few times. So if you get this down really well, it will help you throughout the rest of the song. Let me play those first four bars all the way through. Next two bars are basically almost the same thing except for one variation. See what happened? That chord on top, the melody, which we first played on the second beat, is now pulled forward just by an eighth note. So the first time we had one, two, now we're having one, two. Chord, melody, second bass note. One more time, really slowly. First time, one, two. Two, three, four. Second time, what we're playing now. One, two, three, four. For the rest, everything else in that bar is the exact same thing. Same fingerings, only pulling that one chord forward just a little bit. This is something that Tommy seems to do each and every verse. The first time around, that chord tone, that melody, is played on the second beat. The second time around, it's played in between the first and the second beat. So that is probably something to watch out for. And in the second bar, there's a little variation as well. Remember, I told you that the first time around, that E note that had to be pulled in front of the third beat, that that was something that he only did one time. Well, this is the variation that Tommy will play most of the time, which is the chord, uh, the melody note exactly on the beat. One, two, three. So exactly on the third beat, but Tommy often adds a little pull off as form as an embellishment. So putting the index finger on the second fret and pulling off really quickly to an open string. You get this. So really quickly together with the open A string. So you're holding down the index finger on the second fret. Uh, and as soon as you pick the bass note and the melody note, pull off to the open E string. Three, four. And the rest of the fingering is again exactly the same thing as the first time around. Three, four. And there is another variation. That's the third one uh, of this. So in each and every bar, you have something that is a little bit different. You're keeping, hopefully, that those two melody notes ringing out across the bar line. And what happens is you play the uh, melody note in front of the beat, three, four, bass note, pull off with the index finger to an open string. And then as you play the bass note on the D string, you add back in the index finger and play the exact same chord as you did before. Three, four, That's the basic move. Maybe a, a bit more slowly even. Three, four. And then the rest of that bar again is the exact same thing. Moving 
to an open uh, to those two open strings and the low G down below, heading back into the same ascending bass line. Uh, let me play that that this bar uh, maybe one more time because that the let's say the delay on that pull off on the top E string can make it a bit tricky for some people. So really slowly, this is what you should do: playing the melody, bass note, pulling off, and then putting back the index finger straight away and play together with the D string, the B string, and the E string all three at the same time. Just de delaying that pull off might feel a bit weird in the beginning. Three, four. That's the basic technique you need. Then two, the uh, ascending chord part. You already know those three chords, not a single thing has changed to the G chord. three chords, all three of them, the exact same thing as the first time around. And now instead of moving up two more frets, you're going to jump up one string. So index finger goes from the A string to the E string, middle finger from the B string to the G string, and you add in the pinky on the fifth fret, giving you an F sharp dominant seventh chord instead of an A dominant seventh chord like we played before. This will push the song into the direction of the second part of the verse, which is a B minor chord. One more time, so. And we're doing the same trick. We are playing that last chord in front of the beat before adding in the bass note. So just make sure these two fingers just shift up one string, adding in the pinky on the fifth fret. Let me play those four bars we just did, including all of the variations, just one time all the way through. Then to the B minor chord. Now, before I continue, let me play uh, these first eight bars, which is really the melody that everybody knows so well. Uh, already one time, really, really slowly, so you can get a good look at maybe something you missed, and then we'll treat the second part of the verse in the exact same way. Here we go, really slowly, the first eight bars. minor chord. Let me play just a small section of that second part. Let's stop there. Almost all of it revolves around a B minor chord. You hopefully all know the B minor chord with the bar root at the fifth string, adding in the ring finger, the pinky and the middle finger. For this section, you do need to extend the bar all the way to the low E string because you do need that low F sharp. The first time we're going to play this, we are sort of going to try and fixate most of the melody notes on top of the bass notes. The second time around, I will show you a version with a bit more variation and then you can basically pick and choose which variations you want to add in each time as you play through it. This is the easiest version, starting out on the B minor chord. It might be deceiving in the tablature down below that those uh, two fourth frets are both the thumb pick, but this time it's the thumb pick together with the index finger. This note, fourth fret on the G string, is a melody note. We have removed the middle finger in this case, so we get the second fret on the bar. And we're putting it back down. Alternating, A string, D string, E string, D string. Then moving around the voicing just a little bit, we are heading for a B minor chord with the major seventh in between. This is a bit more tricky. So you're coming from this voicing. We are replacing the middle finger with the ring finger on the third fret on the B string. 
middle finger third fret on the G string, pinky fourth fret on the D string. We are still holding down the whole bar at the second fret. It's a bit of an exotic sounding chord in itself. It sounds really tense. Again, once you play through it with the rest of the song attached, it, it sounds fine. So what is happening is once you get this tricky fingering down, melody note, bass note at the same time, so A string and E string on top, and then playing that sort of tense sounding third in between there on the G string and the B string. that bar, as, as you can see, but you have to keep pushing down on both the E string and the low A string to make sure you can keep the bass line going. So from this to this. Again. After opening up that open E string on top, nothing else much happens apart from just the bass line continuing the pattern. first two bars back to back and as you can see that move from that B minor chord to that B minor major 7 is something that probably will take some time this is not a fingering that most of us are used to so no worries if it takes a bit of time getting that down you have just a split second more because the first melody note is on the bar, is on the second fret on top. So, and that just gives you a split second to move these fingers to where they should be. So as you can see, as I play that melody note on top, I'm still moving fingers to get to that, uh, to that tense sounding triad in the middle of the chord. Then Tommy just removes the middle finger and rounds out the next bar with this fingering, which is a B minor seven chord, something that we usually would play like this. Um, in all honesty, I learned this song the first time when there was no YouTube around. So I did switch from this back to this, just because it felt more natural to me. So if you want to do that, then there's nothing holding you back. There's nothing that you won't be able to play in the next bar. Tommy just goes for maximum efficiency, just removing the middle finger and not moving anything else. If this or the, for instance, the pinky is giving you trouble, then you can switch to just the plain or the, the, the most well-known voicing for a B minor seven voicing. That's the beginning of that, of that third bar is basically just bass note, chord, thumb, middle finger, index finger, all together, which is why you could just as well play it like this. There's nothing else going on. Removing the bar again to give you an open E string while playing the low F sharp. Again, you have to keep pushing down on those low two bass strings. Adding in the third fret, the ring finger on the third fret as a little bar across three strings, which might seem like a strange fingering, but it will make sense once we slide it up to the next chord. And Tommy adds in one last bass note on the second fret with still the bar that is lying down. And then you're going to just slide that full fingering, second fret on the D string together with the bar at the third fret, all the way up to the seventh fret. That's something for just a second. So one more time, that final bar of the B minor section. So let's say from this voicing, that is the chord you want to end up with, bar across three strings on the third fret. And by this point, I have let go of the bar at the second fret and I'm just fingering or fretting that uh, E note second fret on the D string because that just is a little bit easier to slide up to the seventh fret than two full bars trying to push that down all the way up. So one more time. You can actually see me removing the bar from that low bass note straight away to the D string. And then up to the seventh fret for another voicing. 
have a look at that in just a second. Let me play that full B minor section really slowly. And that's the next chord, which is a big E dominant 13 voicing. You pushing up that bar at the third fret along with that index finger all the way to the seventh fret, adding in, so ring finger, sorry, at the seventh fret, index finger at the sixth fret, adding in the middle finger on the seventh fret, which is a jazzy or a funky voicing that is being used a lot, but maybe in finger style not that much. So if this is new to you, that bar with the ring finger might be something tricky in the beginning. And you're going to add in your pinky on the ninth fret as well, just for the first melody note. This is that 13 degree in there. That is basically all that is happening. So you're adding in the pinky on that uh, ninth fret for the melody, followed by a bass note. So bass note together with the ninth fret, index finger on the G string, bass note on the D string, removing the pinky. So you just have to play the seventh fret, two strings at the same time. And that is when the middle finger will alternate to the low E string. Again, seventh fret. And then Tommy often just does a light strum and moving the whole thing back down because you have to move into an E minor chord right away. Low open E string, heading into an E minor chord. Nothing too difficult compared to what we already played. You're holding down an E minor chord, then from an open B string to the second fret with the pinky, to the third fret with the pinky, all while alternating the bass line. So just open E string, bass note on the D string together with two open strings, picking with the index finger and middle finger. To the second fret with the pinky while alternating to the A string. And then again, moving up to the third fret while alternating to the D string. Then adding in the middle finger on the second fret and quickly sliding up from the second fret and the third fret to the sixth fret and the seventh fret, adding in a little bar at the fifth fret. See, so as you perform that big slide going from the second fret all the way up here, add in a bass note, adding in the bar at the fifth fret, And at the end, you're just removing that pinky, giving you the fifth fret on the bar. So really slowly, the picking pattern without the slide. So A note together with, the, sorry, the A bass note together with the G string and the B string. Then alternating the bass line to the D string together with a high uh, melody note, fifth fret on the high E string back to the pinky on the seventh fret, to the low E string for the bass note, removing the pinky, one more bass note on the D string fifth fret, and then really, really quickly, and this is a really big shift, straight away back to that intro chord playing the index finger on the first, uh, sorry, second fret on the G string, together with an open B string. Right after that, heading into, so straight back into uh, the intro again. So, and that big shift going down is something that happens really quickly as well. So one more time, the picking pattern on that A chord, really slowly, first without the slide, slower and 
then straight back for that first chord. Now the picking pattern with the slide included. Picking pattern is the exact same thing, but it might take you a second just to, to uh, uh, orientate yourself, arriving at that fifth fret, sixth fret uh, with the slide, adding in the, the bar right behind that. It happens really, really quickly. So, so and just make sure aim for the sixth fret with the slide and then dropping in the bar at the fifth fret shouldn't pose too much problems. So one more time without the slide. With a slide. Now, with the slide and with the connection to the re intro. And straight back into the intro. Now, if that reconnection, if that, that shift to that first chord gives you problems, then I sort of cheated my way around this for years by just playing an open B string instead. So, uh, And then, and then launching into the intro. So instead of playing those two notes, that second fret on the G string and that open B string, I just played the B string and followed that up with the intro. It's a bit of cheating, but when moving around so much at the end from the seventh fret to the open position, back to the fifth fret, back to the open position, uh, if, if that gives you trouble, then just playing that one string can be a lifesaver to make it into the intro at all. Let me play that last section, starting from the B minor chord all the way through to the end. And then I'm going to conclude uh, the explanation of the verse by playing it through all the way one time really, really slowly. So one more time, starting from the B minor chord. into the next intro and then after that straight into the next verse. That was the full first verse. Now the good news is everything that happens in the verse after this is basically repetition. You already have the variations you need, you have the different uh, uh, things Tommy likes to move around. They were all in this first verse, so the second verse, third verse, it's all repetition. Let me conclude uh, this first part by playing through the verse one time really really slowly and then you should have enough material uh, to get to work for at least one week uh, while I'll get to work on the uh, video for the bridge. Here we go one more time uh, through the verse really really slowly. I hope this sort of covered all your questions and everything you needed to know to get the verse into your fingers. The verse will be repeated quite a few times, so if you get this first part down really well, then you can basically play, I think, almost 70 to 80% of the whole song. You just have to cover a few more variations on that B minor chord, the ending and the bridge, and then you're basically good to go. Have fun working on this first part, and I'll see you again next week. Bye-bye.